name is Jesse Jennings and I'm a content creator here at Plaid and welcome to Let's Paint Live, our monthly painting party where we teach you to paint a full painting in just about an hour. So we kind of have a special edition tonight. We're doing a really fun Mother's Day painting. So um, we've been seeing really big, beautiful, floral, abstract canvases. So we thought it'd be really fun to do that for Mother's Day, whether you're a mom and you want to take some time to yourself um, or you could paint with your mom or for your mom. Um, but anyway, we have our, one of our favorite moms here today, Kirsten Jones, to teach you how to paint this beautiful abstract canvas that we have named Garden Party. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Kirsten. Hey everybody, I'm so excited for you guys to be here tonight. Tonight is very, very exciting. We're painting this large 22 by 28 canvas. Super fun, super fresh for spring, for summer, and like Jess said, so perfect for your mom. Or you can be crafting it as a mom, um, just as a fun night alone, um, doing something that you love. So the first thing I want to do is show you guys what we're using tonight for supplies. So again, I'm working on a really large 22 by 28 canvas. You can use a little bit smaller, a little bit larger, but definitely have fun with it. I'm also working on this easel, so it's just easier to paint a canvas this size when it's upright like this. So I want to make sure you guys have a palette. Today we're going to be using so many new and different techniques to make this large abstract floral. So I want you guys to have some type of a plate because we're going to be using a lot of water in our paint tonight. So a, a plastic plate, a glass plate, paper towels, some water to clean your brushes, and then we are using the Folk Art Paint Kit. It has so many beautiful colors, and the specific colors that we are gonna use tonight is we're gonna use Dutch Aqua, we are going to use Pure Orange, we are gonna use Baby Pink, always Wicker White, because we'll use that throughout the entire painting. We are going to use this beautiful Aqua, bright pink, which this is going to give such a beautiful pop of color for summer, and then yellow, and then the darkest green in the kit is we are using Thicket. And then we are also using the brushes that are included in the paint kit. So mainly what we are going to use is this large scruffy brush and this little scruffy brush, and then maybe the medium flat brush, which this is a number eight. But if you guys have larger or smaller, or you want to use maybe the number 10, flat brush, use whatever brush you're most comfortable with, but we're staying away from those little details and those little liner brushes. And one thing I want you guys to have is a pencil, because we're going to do a really simple pattern, and then a new and exciting tool. This is a tool that I've loved for years, and we want to introduce it to you guys tonight. So this is the Plaid Folk Art Scrapers, and these were introduced as a tool to distress furniture, but this little guy is amazing to do so many techniques when you're doing an, a large abstract canvas. So we're gonna use that tonight. Okay, so that's everything that we need, so now we'll get started. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is apply a pattern. And what I always like to say is we're not applying a pattern specifically so that you can then go in and color it like a coloring book. We are gonna just put placement for the elements that we're painting tonight. So on the big flower, you can see that that neat abstract, almost like stems from the bottom, is what we're gonna put placement on our canvas for first. So I'm gonna go maybe a fourth of a way up the canvas. I always like to measure with my hand. So maybe a hand's height, and very lightly with your pencil. Whenever you're applying a pattern, do it really light, because you don't wanna have to work to cover up your line. So just a really soft line. I'm gonna do mine a little bit darker so you guys can see that on the camera, but do it really light at home. So that is just placement for those abstract stems that we are gonna paint. And then all we are gonna do to put placement for those big beautiful flowers that are gonna fill everything from there up is we are gonna do random circles. I don't want you guys to overthink it and do circles in a row going up or in a row going across. I just want you to very randomly and loosely do a few different size circles. Again, really light with your pencil. I'm gonna do kind of a big one. Make sure you guys, I'm, again, I'm gonna go a little bit darker so you guys can see that. There you go. So a little bit bigger, not perfect, a little bit smaller, just very random filling up the entire top section of that canvas. 
And I just want to remind you guys, if you have any questions, we are live in the studio. So um, I'm here all the way across the studio from Kirsten. Yes, if you have any does, questions, yeah. pop them in the chat and I'll try to answer them um, or I'll relay them to Kirsten and she can answer them live for you. Perfect. All right. So make sure everybody can see those. And you really just want to make sure you've got a little bit of edge because that will be the beautiful blue background color that we create first. So you don't want to fill it like polka dots, but just really the center section, leaving a little edge all the way around, just fill that with circles. Not touching, not perfect, not exact, but just very, very loose and random. All right, so once everybody's got their pattern, the first color that we are gonna use is Dutch Aqua. This is a color that I absolutely love. It's kind of a dirty teal, and it's just so beautiful for a background for bright flowers like this. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna use that large scruffy brush, and I am gonna put that into the water and get that pretty wet. And then I am gonna water down, not equal parts anything, but just watering down the edge of that Dutch Aqua so you've got just a thinner consistency of paint. And no amount is right or wrong. You're just really wanting to get kind of a watered down wash. Add a little bit more water, because on a canvas of this size, we're gonna be picking up paint a lot. And then all I'm gonna do is using this plate so I can get it closer to my canvas, I'm just gonna put some of that onto that plate. I'll still use both the palette, but also, also the plate. So now what we're going to do, guys, is we are going to fill the space between all of these circles and very random. I don't want you guys to go back and forth. I don't want you guys to go up and down. I don't want you to outline each dot. I want you to be very random in all of those spaces between those circles. You can overlap that pencil a little bit but just very random. You can see when you get less paint on your brush, that same color looks a little bit different, so it gives you some different values, but that's just because you have more or less paint on your brush. And that's why we're jumping around the canvas so that your color is very loose and very, um, very almost like a wash, very watered down but you can see not exact. You don't have to worry about covering up every section of the canvas. If a little white shows through, like you can see right there, there's a little white showing through, you can see a little bit there. You're just really creating a soft wash in this Dutch Aqua. Go right up to your line. Now when using water, you guys make sure that you don't have any drips. You want the water to help move your paint, but you definitely don't want to create so much uh, moisture on your canvas that it never dries and that it all runs down. If you get a few areas like that, just brush over that with your brush, but just a really soft wash. Add water when you need it, picking up both the water and the Dutch Aqua, and just going over the entire background except for below your line and inside your circles. All the way up until the edge. And then these canvases are so beautiful, there's no staples on the side. So this is a piece of art that you could hang without ever adding a frame to it. So what I like to tell people, and this would be something you would do maybe after your canvas was dry, is due to the edge of your canvas, what you've done to the top. So on this very top section and on this side, you would paint it with the Dutch Aqua, just so it's beautiful and ready to hang without adding a frame, if you don't want to add a frame. But see how adding water to that just creates that really soft, beautiful color, but then the white still comes through. If you get a little drips, that's okay. Just kind of dust those off. It's not gonna matter, it's not gonna mess up your canvas, because we're gonna cover that up with our stems at the end. But you're just using that to fill in the entire background. We're basically base coating the bright sky behind our flowers as our first step. But because we've added water, we get all of those different values of that light teal. That's really pretty already. <laughs> 
Kristen said sky blue be pretty too addicted to that color. <laughs> it would be pretty any background color and you know we are using the pink and the orange to kind of make a coral um, and the yellow but if you want maybe some more some lavender in your flowers or you want less pink and maybe more red do do what color palette works best for you. Yeah I love that. Okay, so you're really just dusting it, making sure all those areas, and you can see around each circle is not perfect. You can still see the pencil. All of that will go away as we continue to layer and layer on top of this canvas. Okay, so you should have a really good base-coated blue sky. I'm gonna clean off that brush and dry it a little bit in the water. And then what we are going to do is kind of the same thing on the bottom. And I am going to use the dark green, the thicket, and just a little bit, because we do not need a lot of this right now. I'm going to put just a little bit of that thicket on the palette. Using that same scruffy brush, I'm going to water that down. Just putting water on the side of that drop of paint and just kind of mixing that with the scruffy brush. And then doing that same technique, that same back and forth, very random stroke, just to wash color onto the bottom half of that canvas. And the main thing here is you don't want to create a pattern. You don't want to go back and forth. You don't want to go up and down and create stripes. You just want to be really loose and really random, just adding color to the bottom. Let the blue and the green come together and just soften that edge. You don't want a really defined line. And don't overthink this. Don't worry about this because really all this is is a base coat color to do all of the fun techniques that we're going to do next. We're just trying to get rid of all of the stark white of the canvas so that we've got a base coat to add all of our abstract flowers onto. And same thing with this, if you were to choose not to add a frame, when we were done, you would just go and paint the bottom and the sides where the green is on the top. You would paint your edges to match and that would make your painting ready to hang without having to add a frame. But see, going right up to that line, I can still see my line, which is totally perfect. But you just want a really soft, blended area where the blue and the green come together. But not too dark. It's so neat when, when new painters realize that a color this dark with a little bit of water can turn in just to a really soft, nice green. I love that. Okay, so your, your flowers should be base coated. You've just got a really soft sky, the soft green. If you see any areas where maybe there's too much water or you've got some of the color dripping down, all you need to do, I'm just drying off my brush that I cleaned in the water on a paper towel, and with no paint at all on my brush, I'm just gonna dust over those areas. Because we're definitely working on a wet canvas, but one of the great things about folk art and using acrylic is it dries so fast, so we can layer color after color without having a really long dry time between. So just areas where there's maybe a little too much water. I'm just going to dust that off. Okay, so there is your base coat. All right, so what we are going to do next is start having fun with it and adding some color. So I'm going to use that smaller scruffy, same type of brush. Um, the bristles are flat and you use it to almost pounce or sponge color on. So I am going to put some of the yellow on my palette. And here's where I always like to use some of the wicker white. And then no water on my brush. All I'm going to do is pounce in the yellow. And here's where I, we haven't placed a pattern for this particular flower because this is where I want you to just really add color in a few random areas. You can follow exactly what I do. If you love the yellow, add a little bit more. But all we're doing is placing yellow groupings in between these dots. 
These dots will become our big yellow and coral and bright fun flowers. So we're really just adding another layer of background to place our big flowers on the next step. So I'm just pouncing in the yellow and I'm just gonna pick an area, maybe between these two large flowers and I am just gonna pounce and all you're doing is just hitting back and forth, jumping around with the end of that brush, keeping the handle perfectly straight. You're not using it like a paintbrush and going back and forth. You're almost just hammering or tapping. You'll see with a scruffy brush, those bristles will fan out and that just gives you so much more texture. But very random, you don't want to create um, a polka dot, you don't want to fill in exactly, you just kind of want to overlap a very random section of yellow in between those flowers. And this is a great area to show you guys. So there's more yellow there, but then as the yellow becomes less and the blue comes through, it looks like a lighter shade and it just gives you all of that texture. You don't want full coverage in all the areas that you're pouncing the yellow. I'm gonna go over here maybe and add a little yellow here. Same technique. Maybe a little smaller section over here. Picking up paint definitely as you need it. I'm gonna go up here, not too much, cause again, I want you guys to keep the blue sky on the very edge, but maybe the top of the garden, just a little bit of these yellow wildflowers kind of poking out. And you can see the edge is very random and very loose. I'm going to go over here. I don't want it to be equal because you never want a painting, especially an abstract. You never want it all to match. So if I placed flowers there, I would never place flowers there. If I placed them there, I would never place them there. So just really a really loose pattern. I'm going to put a little bit right here, picking up more paint as you need it. And I just want to remind everyone, we've got a couple questions about it. So um, Kirsten tonight is using our Let's Paint Live kit. So I have all the beautiful colors right here. It comes with these 24 beautiful folk art colors. So these are all the colors you need to paint any of our Let's Paint Live classes. So I'm going to check out um, the Plaidcrafts Facebook page under our video section or on the Plaidcrafts YouTube channel. You can find our library of Let's Paint Live classes. So like I said, we do this every month for a few years now. So there's plenty, plenty to learn. Um, and all the paintings can be painted using this kit. So go to platonline.com to find this kit. And it also comes with the brushes Kirsten's using. So she is using the Folk Art 10 piece variety um, artist set. So that comes with the kit as well. So if you buy this uh, set of paints and brushes, you can paint any of these paintings with us. So I just wanna remind everybody, make sure you guys know the kit she's using. It's a great kit for Mother's Day. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a great idea. A great gift for a Mother's Day. A great idea. If Super your mom's smart. crafty or loves art at all, she would absolutely love this kit. Maybe a few canvases and oh my, oh gosh, my gosh, she would what have. a great idea. It would be wonderful. And then if you mom. joined her. Yeah, then you guys can paint together yeah. next month, which we'll announce at the end of this class. Yep. We'll do it monthly, so that's really fun. Great idea. A mom date night. Perfect. <laughs> From the mom. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Sure. Okay, so we added yellow really random in just a few different areas. And now on the same brush, I'm not cleaning it with water, just getting off any big amount of yellow. I'm going to pounce directly into that white and just overlap those yellow areas just a little. Not in every area because you want to see a separation between the white and the yellow, but see how that creates a, a great layer in those soft yellow wildflowers. You could go a little bit outside of the yellow. You could do a little grouping of white, but not covering up the yellow exactly, just highlighting it a little bit using that same technique and just the wicker white. I love this brush for doing cute little wildflower sections like this. It's the perfect brush for that. We're not using any water. We used water on the large scruffy brush to wash the background, but when you're doing texture like this, you don't want to use any water because you want the folk art to cover the blue background perfectly, and it will when you don't add any water. But you can see just the white and the yellow on that blue using this brush, you get so many lights and darks. It almost looks like we've shaded and highlighted that. Okay, 
So now that we've done that, what we are going to do is just place the base coat color, still doing the base coat stuff. The fun techniques are at the end, but we are just going to place the basement colors for our big bright flowers. So to do that, I am going to use the flat brush and we are going to put on our palette, I want you guys to put the bright pink. If you ran out of wicker white, I want more wicker white on there because we'll use that to make different shades of the pink, the orange, and the yellow. The baby pink. the orange and you can see I've got some yellow on my palette for for now I'm just gonna keep that right where it is okay so if these are colors that you absolutely love which they are perfect and beautiful keep them as they are but there's a few areas that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend just a little bit just to get a pink that's in between this value or a coral that's lighter than this orange but darker than this pink. So we're going to blend just a little bit. But in an abstract painting like this, one thing that I want you guys absolutely to remember is blending is more fun. We're not mixing an exact color that has to be placed in an exact part of the canvas. We're really just mixing paint just to get different values of pinks, yellows, and oranges all over our canvas. So mix the colors that are best for you and don't, don't worry about exact amounts. Okay, so we're gonna start anywhere on our dots to place our flowers. And what I'll do first is just go directly into that light pink. I'm using the flat brush and no water. And all I'm gonna do is base coat that, but not using any water and dry brushing. So a little bit, I wanna make sure you guys can see that, a little bit of the white shows on the canvas because all that will do is give that flower a little bit of dimension. Instead of a solid base coated pink circle, you're just going to have really irregular edges and then you're going to have a little bit of the canvas show through. So if that one's light pink, I'm going to maybe jump up here and do another one with that light baby pink, but not base coating a perfect circle just really loose and letting some of that canvas texture and the white show through. That's a great area to show you. See where a little bit of the yellow got picked up in the pink? When you're doing an abstract like this, that is a really good mistake because what it does is it just adds color to that area and to that flower. Okay, so I'm not gonna clean my brush. With that light pink on there, I'm gonna go into that bright pink. And this is where I told you we're gonna mix a little bit, but that's really not mixing. We're just adding and softening that pink by keeping that light pink on our brush. So it's just a little bit lighter than that and a little bit darker than that. And I'm gonna pick another flower and I'm gonna do that same technique, just base coating and the key, the most important thing with this is not to create a polka dot. And not to add any water to our brush. I love that bright pink. Isn't that pretty? I know, I love adding that pop of a it's, pop color, yeah. This is one of my favorite pinks Me in the too. kit. It's Me such too. a beautiful color. So because I did that one, again, I'm gonna go to another spot on the canvas. And I'm gonna do that pink. A Little bit of the, of the white shows through. And you can see I mixed the color to begin with by adding a little bit of that pink. Now I'm just going into that bright pink. So it's even changing the color just enough to make it look like we're using so many different shades of that pink. I'm gonna do a little bit on this one and then what we're gonna do, very simple color mixing. I've got that bright pink on that brush I'm gonna go into the edge of that orange, picking up a little bit more of that pink. Add as much pink as you want. If you want it to be more of a coral color, you're gonna add a little bit more pink. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna barely pick up a little bit of white because white really will change a color really fast. And I'm just gonna soften that orange just a little bit. Not too much paint on my brush, but now I'm gonna pick another flower and just base coat that just like we've been doing. 
I'm going to come up here and maybe do this one. Still with a really dry brush, really irregular edges. That's a great place to show you. See where the orange went over the blue, but it just softens the edge of that flower so it doesn't look like a polka dot. And then this little guy that I left pink on that side, I'm going to go back with that orange and just kind of give him some dimension by doing orange and pink, almost a coral, not really an orange. And see how it's kind of coming together? It's starting to look like a garden. It definitely is coming together for sure. But we're just layering color after color. You so everyone is loving it. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. yeah, I love that. This is exciting for us because we haven't painted a big one like this. I know, ever. this is kind of like a Bob Ross style. <laughs> <laughs> we then, usually are overhead, but this is so fun. And I'm probably not as calming as Bob Ross. Oh, I think you are. He, um, <laughs> oh gosh, as a kid, we would watch him for hours. Um, okay, so look, I'm. I'm thinking back. So I was in the orange. I never went into the water. And then you can see I just went a little bit into the pink. Here's where I really want you guys to have fun with it. There's no rhyme or reason right now to jump in between these three colors. Just think it through a little bit because you don't want to create the same color. Keep them separated just enough, but add all those different shades of pink, coral, and orange to all these different flowers. You'll see that one's a little bit lighter because I went into the light pink. I'm going to go back into that light pink without cleaning my brush. And on that same flower, he's got those two great values, the pink and then that softer coral. In honor of Jess, I'm going to go back in the bright pink because she <laughs> likes it best. I do like it. It is a beautiful pink. Mm -hmm. Pinks are hard, and when you find a good one that you love. I know. It's like almost neon. It's so yeah. fun to add that pop to a painting. I love it with the Dutch Aqua. Oh, my gosh. Me, too. That one, I'm going to maybe do a soft color like that. When you're doing a big painting like this, don't ever be afraid to let two similar colors be next to each other. Because when you have like a big bouquet of flowers, if two yellow tulips are next to each other, that's very, very pretty. You don't want to separate them too much where it looks like you thought it out too much. Hmm, that's a really good tip. So I'm going to do a little bit of that pink. I've got the orange on my brush, so it's automatically going to be on there. And it's nice to have those two colors close to each other. Folk art acrylic, this is another reason I love these paints. As you can see, we are adding tons of dimension, tons of different colors. We're really not even cleaning our brush off in between, and all the colors are so vibrant and so beautiful. A little bit more of that pink. I love the coral. I'm usually not an orange girl, but I love that, so I'm going to add a little bit more down here on this big flower at the bottom. Now what we're doing is we're still really just base coating. Getting our placement, covering up our pattern, and just getting a good spot to do all of the fun techniques. Going into that bright pink, a little bit into the orange. Then I think this one, maybe I'll do the bright pink as well. But you can see, canvas is showing through. Edges are very irregular, which is just pulling everything together. So now this, I think this one, I think, nope, this was the one we did first. When you're working with the acrylics, that is already dry, which is absolutely a wonderful thing. And one of the things I love the best about acrylics. So what we're going to do now is another layer of these same colors. I'm going to get a little bit more of that bright pink on my palette. I've got enough pink, orange, and white. Still no water, and I haven't cleaned my brush. I am just going to, almost like a C stroke, I am going to accent without outlining. See those edges that are really soft and really irregular. I don't want to completely eliminate those. So using the pink, no water, 
I'm just going to do some really random C strokes, but letting paint, letting my brush have not enough paint in some areas, because you don't want it to be defined exactly like a little daisy. You just want a very loose, generic C stroke to kind of define that flower just a little bit more. So on my flowers that are mostly the dark pink, just a little C stroke, no water, but just in some areas to just give a little flower definition. See how it's not a perfect daisy. You don't want to create a perfect pattern, but you just want to really in a few areas, letting your brush empty out of paint so that a C stroke on some of these is much softer and you can see the blue or the base coat. See how that one is kind of solid because that was my first stroke around that flower. And then this one, you can see the canvas behind it. You just want another layer of base coat. See how it's just, see the difference between these two, how it's defined a little bit and no longer as much of a circle. That's all we're doing with C strokes. And make sure when you do these, you want to use a similar color. So for example, on this one, I'll do my C strokes in a shade of that light pink. On this one, I did a little bit of the light with the pink. On this one, I did the bright. You don't want to do a totally different color because that would almost create like an outline on your flower. So on this one, there's a C stroke, but just really loose, overlapping that yellow a little bit, not picking up paint so that each stroke has the same value. Letting the brush get drier with less paint as you go around that one, that one little flower. I'm gonna Mix a little bit of that coral that I mixed in the beginning, a lot of the pink, a little bit of the orange, and just a touch of the white, just so I've got that color for this step. Not too much paint on your brush. And then on this one, for example, I'm gonna do a little C stroke on the edge, but not creating a pattern and not doing it exact. And see how I got to that side of the flower? There's a little less paint, so it gives you that soft edge. This will be a good spot to show. Just C strokes all the way around. I love when the texture of the canvas shows through because mm -hmm. it just gives it such a soft, nice look. You're going to do that on every flower. If you've got too much white, you could go in and add a little pop of color but you're still just base coating and putting a lot of different shades of color on all of your flowers. And I just want to remind everyone, if you're not able to paint with us tonight, um, this is being recorded. It's, we're live now, but as soon as the live stream ends, this will be available to rewatch um, on the Plaid Crafts Facebook page under our video section, but also on the Plaid Crafts YouTube channel. So if you haven't uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, Go check us out. We have tons of great educational content on there. So go ahead and give that video a like and subscribe too. You can rewatch it later at your own pace. You can pause and fast forward, rewind as much as you want to. That's looking so, so, so beautiful. Thank you. It's so much fun colors. to do a big canvas like this and without a pattern where you just kind of yeah. have fun with it. Yeah. That's awesome. So I'm still just doing the C strokes, going in between my three pinks, the little coral that I made. They're not the same size. They're overlapping each other. They're similar in value to the base coat of the main body of our flower. Less paint on sometimes, so you get the dimensions that the canvas creates as you paint over it. And just kind of randomly filling that in, almost like you're dusting each flower with one more layer of color. I'm going to go in that pink and that orange for this big flower in the center. But you can see my base coat, my sea stroke color, they're all different, but they all match and they all come together beautifully. But we're just defining that area. I think I've done them all. Nope, I've got one more, this little one. Just going to do some petals to define him. 
I love how quickly you're able to cover that canvas with paint with that tiny little brush, Kirsten. I know. <laughs> we always tease Kirsten. She likes to use such tiny brushes. <laughs> I do, and She'll I don't know why. She'll paint a dresser with a one-inch flat. She loves it. <laughs> Not that bad, but, but close. Oh. No, it looks awesome. A one-inch flat. I use a liner brush on a dresser, <laughs> Jess. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> That's not true, I never do. <laughs> but just filling in that color. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that pink on there. You can see the pattern that you guys placed with the pencil is already covered up. No need to worry about that. A Little bit of that peach, softer than the coral. I'll do that on this end for my C strokes to define the flower. And then I'll jump right up into that hot pink just because that's kind of what we did on the top. And just blend those together. Almost like you're polishing a pair of shoes. You're just going back and forth. Okay, so what we've really done is just base coated our flowers. We've got placement. We've got some cute little flowers in the middle. So now we are going to add some leaves in the middle of our flowers. And this is a spot where just like when we placed our circles, I don't want you guys to look at it where each flower gets two leaves or each flower gets two leaves and a third. We are really trying to fill in, not all, but a lot of this blue area in a really loose pattern. So maybe there'll be two leaves here, but only one there. Maybe there'll be more here because we've got some, some larger areas of blue in here. But we don't want to think that what we do to one flower, we've got to do to every flower. Because again, we don't want it all to look perfectly put together. We want it to be loose and open. So I am going to get more of that dark green that thicket onto my palette. Always the wicker white, which I'm actually gonna put a little bit more on there, down here towards the green. And then I'm gonna clean off that little baby flat brush that we've been using. And dry it off on a paper towel. You always wanna use a brush that doesn't have a lot of water on it unless you're creating a wash like we did in the very beginning. So using the flat brush, using the entire side of the flat brush is what we're gonna do for these leaves. We're not gonna make them look like leaves. I'm gonna actually do one, do one right here. So like a traditional leaf, you would use the chisel edge and you would kind of come together as a point and you would fill that in. We are gonna actually do almost a representation of a leaf using the entire flat side of the flat brush. So a leaf is, a leaf is gonna be almost more like that. Like little brush strokes, almost in a square pattern to just represent in between the flowers where we would place those leaves. So I don't want you guys to use the chisel edge like you would traditionally do to kind of outline a leaf and then fill it in. We're gonna use the entire side of that flat brush to almost do like a little rectangle that will represent the leaves. Okay, so going in just the dark green with a touch of white, and this is where, again, we're mixing, but we're mixing in such a beginner type way. It's not equal parts white to equal parts green. It's just jumping back and forth between the two colors so you just get all those different values. Never too much paint, because you can always add, but you can't take off. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I might start in this area. And the only key to this is have fun with it and don't cover up all of the Dutch blue, because that background is so beautiful. I'm gonna start right there, and I am just gonna do a few random leaf patterns. And you can see where the blue comes through, where the canvas comes through, you're just representing where a little grouping of those leaves would be. Over here, I'm gonna do the same thing, just to fill in that area. Different than we did with the yellow because we pounced, but the same idea of just random sections of green. I'm gonna go up here, there's a large area of blue, and just back and forth. I don't want you guys to do next to each other, so it creates almost like I don't know, tail feathers. I want it to be really random. And just back and forth to represent a little grouping of leaves. I'm gonna do a little grouping here. 
And you can see right now I'm only using the dark green and then I'm letting my brush lose some of the paint and have that light blue show through. A Little bit up here, just long flat strokes with a dry brush, no water. A Little bit in here maybe to connect that flower to the other ones. Maybe a little bit on this edge, but just a little because I don't want to go to the edge of my canvas. I like to have that soft blue all the way around. But you can see I'm just picking up the green, not picking up any water, and not having too much paint on there so it's really messy, but just enough to get a good solid brush stroke. And then let the dry brush create the rest of the texture. Never going back into the water. With a canvas this big, every now and then I have to lean back to see where we need some more of the green. I'm going to do a little bit right there. And now what I want you guys to do is just a little bit, because remember a little goes a long way, I'm going to dip a little bit into that white, and not perfectly, but just soften that green a little bit. I'm going to go over the dark sections, not completely, but just softening that dark green base coat of my leaves. You don't want to cover up all the green with the lighter green because you want all those different values. Still not using any water on your brush, but just softening the edges of those dark green leaves. If it gets too light with the white, go right back into that dark green. No need to clean your brush. And just pick up a little bit more of the green. Softening each one just a little. Using that light green, I'm going to do a few more areas. You can see when you add a little more white, the green is such a soft value against that blue. It's just creating some dimension. Looks beautiful against that blue. Just in a few areas. Maybe a neat thing to do is maybe the dark green is in the center, and then you kind of do just a little bit of that lighter green around the edge, just to soften that up. That thicket is such a beautiful color when mixed with white. I love that color green. Little bit here, not going all the way to the edges because I love that blue being all the way around the edge of the canvas. Little bit up here maybe. I'm just going back and forth into the green and the white just to fill all these areas. A little bit over here. You can overlap your flowers a little bit because you know in a bouquet sometimes the leaf you see first, sometimes the flower you see first depending on how you turn the arrangement. So think about that when you're painting. The leaves are not always behind the flower or vice versa. You're really just placing color. Makes a little drum sound when I'm painting. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> okay, so then you always, I always have to stand back and make sure I've got all the color in the spots that we need it because really we're still just base coating, but having fun with it because we're getting all of this great texture. So I'm gonna go a little bit, I didn't clean my brush, I've still got that green on there but I'm going to go just into the white and just do a little pop of the lightest, lightest green because the white will be on there, but that green will also show through just because you didn't really clean out your brush and that gives you a lot of very easy shading and highlighting. Not covering up all the green, but just getting those little pops of white on top of the sections 
that are the leaves. Still no water. The lighter the color, so like the lighter the green or the white, the prettier it is on the very edge of your painting. So on the tip of these green leaves, maybe just a little bit of white where it almost disappears into the blue, but it just adds so much to a painting like this. Like I'm really just going into white, but because I have a little bit of green still deep in that brush, that's why it creates such a soft shade. I'm going to do it a little bit right there where that leaf meets that flower. Maybe a little bit right there. I'm starting to whisper talk like Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why he does it. Happy little flowers. Oh, happy little brush stroke. <laughs> I can't. I could never. <laughs> He's so calming. <laughs> I tried though, it was kind of good, right? <laughs> I loved it, I think you're, you're killing this whole Bob Ross thing tonight. You I'm know, taking I'm, it to a new level. I'm loving it. <laughs> okay, so now we're getting, we've got a really great base coat. And really this is kind of cute all by itself. If you were working with your kids and maybe they're done, this is a great painting that you could hang and it's just so beautiful and fresh. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna view this as our base coat is all done. Our colors are placed, we've got shading, we've got highlighting, and now what we're gonna go in for the finishing touches is we are just gonna add big brush strokes of color, almost the same value over those areas. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So take your large flat brush that we've been using, clean that in the water, dry it on your paper towel, make sure that you've got, so I need some more of the bright pink I'm going to just put it right over the top on my palette, but make sure you've got all of those values we used in the beginning back onto your palette. Always more wicker white, my favorite. Oh, there we go. And you're even going to need the yellow for this. So you've got your, your palette loaded with the colors that we used for the flowers. So what we are going to do is just like we did with the leaves, we used a large flat stroke to represent the leaves. We are going to use a large flat stroke loaded with no water but a lot of paint and overlap the center section of each flower. And really no rhyme or reason to this. We're just creating those big brush strokes kind of in the center of our flowers. Let me pick one that would be really easy to see. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that coral and on this big flower right here, I've got a value that's pretty close. You don't have to color match it exactly, but you don't want to be hot pink. You want to be a coral and a pink. I am just going to do really large strokes. I want to make sure you guys can see that. Just back and forth, focusing more on the center of the flower but just to give it, to define the center of that flower and give it a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna go in that light, light pink for this one. Just really in the center and just filling in with large, flat brush strokes. This is a good spot to add. I'm gonna go into that wicker white and over here in that coral color that I've been mixing the whole time, I added just enough white to make that same color a softer coral color. But remember, you're not trying to mix the exact color that you used before. This will be a good spot to show. Large, flat strokes just back and forth, more in the center body of each flower. The fun thing about a painting like this is we are just layering and layering and layering. You don't have to overthink the color. The main rule is that you just stay kind of within the value. That will always be a pink flower. That will always be a coral flower. That will always be a really soft pink flower. But you're just going in and adding another layer towards the center of each flower. Never going in the water. just jumping from color to color and that folk art is so beautiful because it doesn't muddy at all. 
you can see this is what I love in so many different areas you see the texture of the canvas and you see the color behind it popping through that is what you want because that gives you all that dimension all that depth but just back and forth not covering up your C strokes not eliminating all the work that you've already done but just adding a little bit more color to each flower. I'm going to add a little bit softer pink on this one just to give it a little contrast. If you've got a lot of buildup in your brush, don't go in the water, but just put that on the paper towel and get a little bit of that paint out and then just go right back into your different paints. Always picking up maybe a little bit of white on this light pink because it adds some great value to the center but keeping those dark colors keeping all the work that you've done with the base coat you don't want to eliminate any of that you just want to add to it a little bit of or oh I like that a little bit of orange right there Back into Jess's favorite pink. <laughs> we'll rename it to be Jessie's pink. I love that. We'll suggest that tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> we'll see what the product team thinks. <laughs> well, they might agree. <laughs> Depends who we ask, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> but just a little bit. And here for the very last touches, what I got, want you guys to do is maybe whatever color you're in. So I'm in the light pink. Add a little bit of white. We're not cleaning our brush, so we're still getting that soft pink coming through. But on the very center of your flowers that are the lightest shade, just a little bit of white. It almost looks like peonies. You know how they have thousands and thousands yeah, of petals. Tons of texture. And lots of texture and all those different colors. So on this big one, because I still had a little bit of white in my brush, and then I'm adding that pink on top, you're just getting all of that texture. A little bit on this one. Add paint to your palette when you need it. I'm running out of the bright pink, so I'm going to add a little bit of that. All right, so now we're going to clean our brush. And we are going to do that same technique with the yellow. Our flowers are coming together so beautifully. Cleaning it in the water and drying it on a paper towel. I'm going to use that same technique. I'm loading it into the yellow. And I'm going to use that entire flat edge, not the chisel edge to make a thin line, but the entire flat side of the brush. And I'm going to go right over this yellow, kind of blending together a lot of that space. I don't want to cover up all the hard work we did with the scruffy brush, but I just want to fill that area a little bit more, maybe overlapping in some areas. See how that overlapped the pink, but such a beautiful way that it accented the pink by just a little bit of yellow getting over the top of that pink just filling in a few areas where you've already got the yellow, where you've already got the hard work that you did with the scruffy, you're just extending that yellow with a different stroke. Oh, I need some more yellow on my, there we go. Add paint to your palette as you need it. A few strokes over the yellow area is okay that you did with the scruffy, but don't cover up all that dimension. So now's a really fun technique. So we've got the yellow. We're going to go into the white, and we are going to do that same flat stroke just to add a little bit more color to those yellow wildflower sections. We still haven't cleaned our brush at all in water. And then what we're going to do now to kind of combine all of this and soften the edges in the entire bouquet is on this same brush, no water, I'm going to go into the white, and then every time I go into a color, I'm going to go into the white first. So I was in the white, 
then I'm going to go into the orange. Where I've got that color, I'm going to allow that orange to meet the yellow. So I'm going to go into the white, still that messy brush with all the colors in it, but I'm going to focus on the coral area. So I'm going to take that white brush into the coral, stroke it just a few times, and areas where I have coral, I am going to let that overlap into the yellow. So in that area, I've got the corals. I'm going to let that overlap. So I'm going to go, need more white, add it to your palette as you need it. I'm going to go into the white, and then I'm going to go into that soft pink. Letting the white really break down the colors to all be a pastel version of this. So that's a light flower. I'm going to overlap and just blend the yellow, the pink, and that area with those colors. This is kind of a pastel flower, so I'm going to go a little bit over the flower, a little bit over the yellow, but just to soften that area where those flowers meet. All pastels, everything we're doing right now is with a, um, a little bit of wicker white loaded in our brush first but not just wicker white. We don't want to clean it completely. So I'm going into the wicker white, and then I'm going into that beautiful Jesse pink. <laughs> Be in trouble tomorrow. And I'm allowing that to just combine the sections between all the different wildflowers. This is where it becomes such a fun abstract painting as opposed to something that's very defined. I've got that white loaded on there first, and then I go into that really bright pink and just breaking up the sections into the white and into the pink. This is a really bright pink. I don't want to cover the blue completely, but just a few strokes that brings all of those flowers together in a really soft, fun way. Going Everyone's in. loving this, Kirsten. Any so. questions? Any concerns? No questions any? so far. <laughs> um, a shout out to our cameraman, John. He's doing a great job, job zooming in. So absolutely. Um, just so refreshing, so relaxing. Everybody is absolutely loving this beautiful, oh, bright I hope summer so. spring painting. Yes, for sure. I hope some of you are going to do this with your mom. Yes, me too. A lot of people have said they're going to do it. And like, like I mentioned in the comments, guys, if you do decide to paint this painting later on, or if you're painting along with us right now, make sure to post it and hashtag plaid craft so we can see your work. We love seeing what you guys are doing. Definitely. We love to inspire you with these classes, but we get so inspired by you guys as well. We stay up late on these nights just to see all of we them do. that come in. <laughs> we do, it's so I fun. I know. But all I'm doing still is I've not gone into any water. I am going into white because I want to really soften the value of everything and then into the color and then going in that area. So I went into the white, then into that coral that I created. So it's a pastel version. And then I'm finding spots on my canvas that are that coral. And I'm just breaking up and overlapping. I'm overlapping the green a little, the yellow a little, just really bringing all of that together. But not in a pattern, not outli outlining anything just jumping around the, can the canvas, because that's what gives you such a beautiful abstract look. Okay, so now that we've done that, this is the tool that I love. So this is kind of an exciting, tricky, fun, um, very creative technique. Paint pouring is so popular. Just where paint colors go together in whatever rhyme or reason the paint chooses to go together is kind of the concept with pouring. But you get this beautiful technique. That's kind of what's going to happen with this. So these are folk art home decor scrapers. Again, they're meant for furniture and scraping paint and making farmhouse look. We are going to use it to create that beautiful striped modern bottom. So what we are going to need is you are going to need Thicket, let's see, you're going to need the dark green that we've been using all night, the white and the Dutch aqua and the tiniest bit of yellow. So make sure if you're working on this giant canvas, protect your floor. You won't get too much on there, but always work on a drop cloth. So what we're going to do is we are going to create almost like a dripped paint pour that you guys see in the photo of the finished painting 
that is behind me. So that bottom is what we're going to do. So to do that, we are going to drip. You can start anywhere. You can start more in the middle. We're going to work from, so from one side to the center and then from the center to the other side. So maybe start in the middle and you are just going to get really close to that canvas and you are going to put blobs of paint. Now don't don't overthink it where you line up your blobs exactly. You can see in that finished painting, good job, John, <laughs> that <laughs> we are just going to create a really modern loose edge. So you are going to drip paint very random. Don't space them out exactly. Don't do, um, the key to this is don't do green, white, blue, green, white, blue, green, white, blue. Be, be random. If you love the Dutch Aqua, maybe do a little bit more of that. If you want it a little bit softer and lighter, use more white or yellow. But you can see they're starting to drip down. But just different squirts. I can see why Bob Ross did it, because when you're squeezing it, you automatically talk slower. <laughs> squeezing out that paint really close to your canvas. Don't be scared, it's gonna be beautiful. I'm not going to use a lot of the yellow for no reason other than I like these three colors better. So you can see I've got a lot of the Dutch Aqua, a lot of the white, and I'm just going to do a few little sections. If it starts to drip down, that's okay. A little bit of the yellow. Not as many spots and not consistent. Let's see, where do I have an opening? Maybe right there, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Just like paint pouring, you have to cross your fingers and hope for the best. So but Kirsten, while you're um, adding those blobs of paint, um, <laughs> we've had a couple questions about size. So do you think you could paint this smaller if you wanted to, if you oh, didn't have a canvas so big? Absolutely, you could paint it on a 10 by 10 on really any size canvas. Yeah. It's all about the technique. You would do the exact same techniques, you would just do it in a much smaller scale. Yeah, or even less flowers. Yeah, definitely. You could do just one really beautiful abstract yeah. flower on the blue background and that would be beautiful. I love that idea. Okay. So this actually looks kind of cool. You it could just let cool. it. I like the drip. For I know, sure. me too. You could just let it continue to drip, but you can see on there that there's a lot of paint that I squirted out on there. The reason you need a lot is because we are going to drag that all the way to the bottom to create just a very modern pat pattern that will represent our stems. So I'm using, with the scraper, you get several different scraper sizes. I'm going to use the medium one, but use whichever one is most comfortable. And the only key to this is you get above the blobs of paint and you pull down, but you don't want to mash down so hard that you actually remove all of the paint from the canvas. You just want to go hard enough to move the paint without removing the paint. Okay, here goes. I'm going to put that on top of those paint blobs and I'm just going to pull down to the bottom of my canvas. I'm going to use a paper towel and wipe off that excess. And you know what I might do? I'm going to lift up my canvas so you guys can see that better. I'm going above the paint that I applied to my canvas and then I'm just going to drag down creating that really modern stripe. And every time I do it I'm just wiping that on a paper towel. I'm not cleaning it in the water. So not mashing too hard, just skimming on top of it and creating that beautiful modern stripe. That looks so good. I love this tool. This is such a fun tool. Paula Ken Savage said, hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, I am. <laughs> good tip. Oh, I can breathe now. Okay, <laughs> so because we have such a large canvas, I'm just gonna go do exactly what I did to that side, to this side, still using a lot of that Dutch Aqua. It's a color that I love. We'll rename that tomorrow too. Okay. And then <laughs> a little bit of the green. Aqua. <laughs> that doesn't sound so good. <laughs> I like your pink way better. <laughs> a little bit of the wicker white. And you can see there's no right or wrong. There where the colors blended, like I love that. And there where it's a really strong line is as beautiful. So I'm adding white. Kathy said it also looks like an old picket fence. Oh, that's so really cute. cute. Yeah, it really does. Idea. 
and a little bit of yellow for no reason other than I just want a little less yellow. If you love yellow and that's perfect for you, add whatever color. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of the Dutch Aqua. For a canvas this big, we've barely used that much paint. The acrylic paint goes so far. You can do so many paintings with it. Okay, holding my breath again, <laughs> same thing. I'm just going to lightly go above where I've applied the paint, not mashing down too hard, but just dragging that all the way down. A swipe on the, whoops, a swipe on the paper towel. Same thing. And then one last one on the edge. Oh, I love that. I was so nervous, but it worked. It looks great. And then just on the edge. And you can see all those great areas where your stripes are different. That's what you want when you're doing an abstract painting. You want everything just to be so different and flow together. Okay, so really, really quick, I'm just going to show you a little bit of what you can do with this scraper. So using the smaller one in your kit, because you get four, not in your paint kit, but in the, in the scraper kit, you get four different sizes. I just want to show you a great, quick way to add color and texture for the finishing touches of your canvas. So I'm using the same Dutch Aqua and the same Wicker White. I am going to just put that scraper into the Dutch Aqua just pouncing it in there. You got a lot of paint on there, but just on that very bottom edge. And then all I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this out again. Oh, maybe I'm not. Okay, I'm going to do it right here so you guys can see it. This is Dutch Aqua, but watered down like a wash. This is Dutch Aqua straight out of the bottle. I'm just going to use that scraper to just really accent. It's almost like a giant butter knife, and you're just buttering the edge of your canvas. And I'm just pulling that, or like you're doing drywall. I was going to say, this is kind of the way you would use this tool on furniture, right? Yes, absolutely. By scraping paint onto yep, it. Yep, you would scrape paint on or off. Yeah. But just, that is Dutch Aqua with water, without water, with the canvas showing through, and it looks like we did three or four different shades of blue, but it's just that same Dutch Aqua applied differently to your canvas. That's amazing. So um, now I'm going to go, no water, I'm going to go from that Dutch Aqua into the white, and again, no rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of bouncing back and forth between wicker white and Dutch blue, and I'm just going to scrape in some areas. We have moving a quick question, with the edges. Kirsten. Uh, Marilyn would like to know, how would you fix the side where the paint didn't reach the bottom? So I guess maybe the sides of their canvas they're wondering about. Like maybe an area like that? Yeah. I'm going to leave that. Mm -hmm. I actually think that's beautiful because, again, it's an abstract, loose painting. Mm -hmm. What you would do is I would never start in the middle with your scraper and go there. I would put white, blue, green, and yellow over your original sections and just pull down again. I would only work it maybe once or twice, but that will get paint all the way to the bottom. Thanks. Yep. So just a little bit more white and just allowing that scraper to add just a little bit of texture to those areas. Just a great technique for abstract painting. Okay, then all we have left, and these little flowers are going to be perfect, is I'm using the scruffy brush, that little tiny one that we used in the beginning to do our yellow, cleaning that and drying it off on my paper towel. And all I'm going to do is pounce into the white, pounce into the yellow, and all we're going to do is give the centers of each of our little flowers a pounce of yellow and white. So not in a perfect circle, but maybe three little pounces on him. I'm going to go back into the white and maybe do two for the littler flower. He's such a big guy, so maybe I'll just do a few. Going into white for this one. But just defining, even though they're all so loose and abstract, but just giving the little touches to the center of these beautiful flowers with yellow 
and white on our littlest scruffy brush. That little guy, I'm just going to give one. I think I got them all. Did I get all the centers of all the flowers? And that is our abstract painting. I cannot believe we got that done. It's I so love it. big. I know. I'm super <laughs> impressed. It was kind of ambitious for an hour-long painting class. Absolutely. It looks amazing, Kirsten. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, so much for joining us. Um, like I said, this is our monthly paint party, Let's Paint Live. We do this the first Thursday of every month, so make sure to check back next month. Um, if you didn't get it in the beginning, I talked about our Let's Paint Live kit with these 24 beautiful folk art colors. You can paint all of our Let's Paint Live classes with this kit. It comes with brushes as well. And you can find this on PlatOnline.com. And I'm also going to let you know the painting we'll be doing next month, which is another really fun one. It's going to be Kirsten Jones again, which we're so excited <laughs> about. And she's going to be teaching us a brand new technique, a sort of faux watercolor technique using our Let's Paint Live kit. And we're going to be learning um, this underwater color is what we've named it. So um, again, the first Thursday of next month, we will see you then. And thanks so much for watching.